And welcome back to the hot lap. Welcome back to our, well, hello, to our Mexican Grand Prix preview. Coming up, we are well, finding out who is the favourite, especially according to the bookies, looking at our top three talking points. A look back at the Grand Prix track in Mexico. FIA are under scrutiny. Apparently there's new United States footage. More penalties? Probably not, if I'm honest, but it makes for interesting reading. And also... Very interesting reading. Um, nothing Whitney Houston like, but it does involve bodyguards. Yes, Verstappen gets bodyguards for the Mexican Grand Prix. Let's get into those uh, odds, those booking odds. I mean, you've got to put it out there. Red Bull probably going to be favourite at Mexico. They've done they've done so well here. So let's see. So, the Mexican Grand Prix. I mean, um, the booking odds. Who is favourite? As we know, it's going to be Max. He's the most likely winner. And it gets underway this weekend. And to complete this middle leg of the American triple header. Now, bet 365. No, we're not affiliated with them at all. But they've kind of got a little story with the mirror talking about the odds. And it said Red Bull, Red Bull as we all know, have been the team to beat since basically Bahrain at the start of the season, with Max delivering what pretty much is one of the most dominant season in F1 history. Now, Verstappen has won three consecutive Mexican Grand Prix, but the party is coming back to Mexico. And Checo Perez, yes, yeah, Sergio Perez, will be looking to cause an upset. Will he? It's unlikely on current form, but home Grand Prix, it does funny things. I mean, back in 99... Back in 99, 2000, who would have thought David Coulthard would win both, win, 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 win back to back? You know, Mika Hakan and his teammate. I was there. For, I was, I was there for the 2001. Awesome. So you never know. And if Perry, this was going to be Perry's last year, what a way to go out! I wonder if he does win it. There's all these rumours about him retiring. Is he going to be like, I'm going to retire anyway? Perez will be wanting to put an end to this poor run of form with a strong performance fueled by the backing of his home crowd. Perez is currently 7-1 to one to win at his home Grand Prix outright and 4-6 to six to make the podium. So when we look at the odds, the outright favourite, 2-7 two, uh, two to seven is Max Verstappen. Perez at 7-1, to one, as you've seen. Lewis Hamilton at 10-1. to one. Lando Norris at 18-1. to one. George Russell at 22-1. to one. It's almost worth giving George Russell a go because... The reason why he's so far back, I think, is because he's pretty much been off form, particularly at the last Grand Prix. But he was quite good at guitar, wasn't he? He was quite handy at guitar. Maybe worth it. I don't know. Um, probably is, you know. But you would be silly to bet the mortgage, at the very least, against Red Bull and against Max Verstappen. And the person most likely to beat Max, normally, you'd say, is in the other car. So... Yeah, I mean, you've 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 got you've got to go, you've got to go with Red Bull, but you never know. And this is where we get into our this is where we get into our talking points for the Mexican Grand Prix. So Logan Sargent, one of our big talking points, as we know, he was the first American to score points in thirty years since Michael Andretti. So what now? James Vowles has stuck his neck out for Logan Sargent, hasn't he? Williams believe in Hogan. Will we start believing in Hogan? Sorry, in Logan. Will we start believing in Logan? Um, I would like to. I would love him to come here and be on par with Albon, Albon as he was at the um, in in you know in in America. He was doing really well. I do have my doubts, but it's going to be a big test now. Getting that point stuck off your back can change some drivers. Kind of like when you win. When you win that first race, changes a few drives. I mean, look at Mika Hakkinen. Yes, the way he won that first race, funny enough, and the second race, yeah, um, it made you scratch your head. But look at what he did, and look at what he did after that. We've all we've already mentioned him, but let's mention him again. The home Grand Prix for Sergio Perez. Can he beat Max? I think in a fair fight, quite unlikely, unless there are some shenanigans. He's probably had slightly worse luck than Max. Um, overall, I guess, but I still feel some shenanigans are going to have to happen. And, and, and for me, he may not even be favourite for second, um, which we'll get into in a bit. 
if he qualifies well, if he qualifies in the front row, I think he's got a chance at the start. If he, you know, even even on the second row, but he needs to qualify well. He needs to get that qualifying off his back. The pressure is going to be on, and this may well be his last Mexican Grand Prix. Who knows? But what I mean, imagine the crowd. A home win for Sergio Perez would, would be absolutely amazing. And last but not least, I'm kind of cheating here. Yes, you can see Hamilton's car, but the Austin Grand Prix fallout. We had this really fast Mercedes with this new floor, but that then got disqualified. Hamilton getting to within a couple of seconds of Max Verstappen, albeit Max Verstappen having that brake problem. But Max Verstappen ruining everyone in the sprint race. Could that have been down to tyre temperature? Who knows? But I think the whole world will be looking to see whether Lewis Hamilton could potentially cause an upset. And at the very least, I think he is a uh, second place may well between, be between him and Perez. But where will where will McLaren be as well? Um, that's kind of like if there was going to be a fourth talking point, that could be it. Will McLaren spoil the party for the second place team, which I'm pretty sure is going is is going to be Mercedes. If I'm honest, um, it's it's going to be that Mercedes team. So let's get into let's get into um our our race preview. This is the Mexican City preview. The Mexican Grand Prix. It's a really, really strange track. I mean, you can you will be able to see the track here if I just uh, click there. That's the track. You've got what essentially is a absolutely really, really long straight. I think one of the longest of the year. Um, it's kind of like a mini Hockenheim when you look at all those straight. When you look at the two long straights, and then you've kind of got loads of twists and turns. So I mean, the always the FIA always do a quite a nice job in previewing the race. It goes um. It says, uh, the middle act of an American triple header sees teams make the short hop from Austin, Texas, to Mexico City. And the Autodromo, her, I'm going to get this wrong, Hermanas Rodriguez, home of the Mexican City Grand Prix. It's round 20 of this year's championship. Now, what is interesting, and it notes, is the high altitude of this circuit. It brings unique challenges to the teams. We've got lower air pressure, and that greatly reduces downforce and cooling requiring teams to run monaco levels of downforce for monza levels of grip and when you excuse me there and when you actually look at it i mean that's really really true what you 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 can you can see the tree you can see the track right there it's it's gonna be it's gonna be quite interesting isn't it i mean here's the article here let me uh get that for you so you can hopefully read it a bit better so and it says the high altitude as we said um it's going to have effect on downforce and cooling and to get Monza levels of downforce, to get Monza levels of grip, they have to have Monaco levels of downforce. That's insane. And also open up their bodywork to encourage as much airflow as possible. They also need to learn about the new tyres as Pirelli have moved to the softest tyres in their allocation this weekend, bringing in the C3, C4 and C5 compounds. If I remember last year, I think everyone felt that we'd kind of gone a bit too hard because the tyres were lasting and lasting. Now, it goes on to say that post-race disqualifications at Cota last week changed the complexion of several tight battles in both championships. Sergio Perez is now 39 points clear of Hamilton in that battle for second, while five points for Sonoda doubles Alfa Tauri's tally and leaves the Italian team just two points behind Haas. So really, I mean, these points are really, really important, even for the lower down, the lower down teams. They mean, I mean, they mean absolutely billions and billions not billions sorry million but it feels like billions i think for some teams that it's millions of pounds that's what that's what it's worth to them and i remember in when formula one was in not so a good place financially let's say it was but yeah it was basically teams could potentially go bust that's how that's how important as you can see um pirelli of uh previewing the grand prix here as we know 71 laps, it says. A race distance total of 305.354 kilometres. The circuit length is 4.3 kilometres. A lap record, a certain Valdelli Bottas in the Mercedes. It says traction. You can see the traction 3 out of 5. Asphalt 1 out of 5. Asphalt abrasion 2 out of 5, which makes sense now why they brought that softer, you know, the softer tyres. Track evolution is a 3. Tyre stress, very low 2. Braking is very low, 3. Well, it kind of in the middle. I think lower than lower than um, than America, which Max Verstappen will be quite happy with. Last rule two and downforce. And downforce is five. So, 
Yeah, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? I have, I still think Red Bull. You've got to go with Red Bull. They've, I mean, Max Verstappen has pretty much dominated here on year on, not you know, year on year. What twenty two, twenty three, um, and he's he's won there. He's won here before that. He just missed out. I remember on his first pole position. I think when Daniel when Daniel Ricciardo kind of snatched it away. But there we go. So the FIA. Um, this is from planetf1.com by Jamie Woodhouse, is under scrutiny. And let's get into why. The FA could be set with a fresh track limit storm, with some drivers apparently fuming as footage of undetected breaches of the US Grand Prix come to light. Now, the infamous topic of track limits, it was a major talking point at Qatar, and before that, at Austria, where we had penalties um, long after, long after the race. Now, the FIA president, Ben Solayem, uh, he declared the Qatar Grand Prix aftermath that Ben Youth Venues like Austria and the sale in Qatar must find solutions or drop off the calendar. Yep. So track limit breaches, it's saying here that some of them are going undetected. And it uses uh, Paul Perez as an, as an example. It says Sergio Perez was one of the drivers rather vocal on team radio regarding limit track limits, accusing Mercedes George Russell of going off a lot in their early battle. Though footage via Automotor and Sport suggests Perez may have been extremely fortunate to have received only one track limit strike in Austin. And you can see here, uh, yeah, very much. I mean, we don't know how many times, but there's Sergio Perez clearly see uh, the other side of the white lines. Now, turn six was one of the corners where track limits were being monitored. Though footage acquired by Auto and Sport shows Perez driving to the right of the boundary line in that corner. The report saying the Red Bull driver did this several times with varying degrees of severity. The report makes it clear Perez is not the only driver who took liberties with their line through that turn, with CCTV camera placed at that part of the track to monitor the limits. Williams' album was also investigated and cleared regarding some indications of possible infringements, turn six, with CCTV footage not available to the stewards due to misplacement. So that's going to be interesting. Is that going to be spoken about um, at the, at, you know, at the press conference? I, I don't know. I'd imagine it's potentially already happened or currently going on. But there we go. So an interesting story here. Um, rookie drivers taking part in FP1. So now, now that it's, this is from Jack Dewan from WTF. One.com. Now that the season is very steadily coming to an end, it's time for drivers to step aside and let the juniors take their cars for an FP1 ride. In Mexico, we're expecting quite a few cameos. Now, as part of F1's mandatory rule, every team on the grid must use two rookie drivers during two FP1 sessions over the season. However, if you have a rookie in your car this season, Williams with a Logan Sargent, McLaren with Oscar Piastri, Alpha Tauri with Nick De Vries. That does actually count towards the completed rookie sessions. If you want to keep up to date, which teams are yet to run drivers, we've got you covered here. But now, what should you expect in Mexico? Oh, it's not by Jack Doohan. Oh, I thought that was strange. My bad. Uh, silly me. So we've got Jack Doohan. We've got Frederick Vesti. Um, he's currently second in the F2 Championship. Vesti will replace George Russell in the Mercedes FP1. Um, Duin is in his second year of the Alpine Academy, previously participated in the same FP1 session for the outfit during the latter stages of last season. Next up, we have Isaac Hajar. I probably got that wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, Isaac is Alpha Tauri. Oli Beerman. Yes, Oli Beerman. I think we all know him. Um, can we get another round of applause for another F1 weekend debut? Be Beerman, who is still only 18, has won four races in his rookie F2 season. He's the latest Ferrari prodigy. Um, but this week, um, and definitely a driver to like account for in the future. But this weekend, he'll be behind the Haas at FP1. Theo Porcher, F2 championship leader. Theo will replace Bottas in the Alfa Romeo team in Mexico. And that's it for now. That's a fair few, isn't it? Especially because we're winding down. Now, last but not least, Red Bull confirmed their stamp and bodyguards over Mexico safety fears. Yes, the Dutchman will be protected this weekend. This is an article from Racing News 365. So, Red Bull advisor Helmut Marco, he's confirmed that Max Verstappen will be provided with bodyguards to ensure his protection at the Mexican Grand Prix. And he said the Dutchman has, uh, has had a failed relationship with teammates, um, and home favourite Sergio during their time together with tensions spilling over, particularly last season in Brazil. So whilst those fishes have uh, seemed to have repaired, at least publicly, Perez's fans have been far from impressed with his treatment in the wake of what's been quite a difficult year. 
for Sergio. This was demonstrated in the chorus of boos for the now three-time F1 champion Verstappen after he won at the US Grand Prix. Apparently a lot of Paris fans there. We've kind of spoken about the boos with the hostility continuing as he collected his trophy on the pro on the podium. So a similar welcome is expected this weekend, given the home sport for Perez. Yeah, it makes sense. Now, whilst the use of bodyguards may seem excessive, the Mexican venue has had issues in recent years regarding fan behaviour in the paddock. A number of drivers attested to the scrums forming between garage and hospitality areas as supporters swamped them for pictures and autographs. Pierre Gasly suggesting personal belongings had been tampered with. Now, speaking to an F1 insider over the use of bodyguards for Verstappen, Marco explained Max doesn't actually want that and is relaxed but we have a responsibility for him so we just want to be on the safe side absolutely makes sense um so verstappen's bodyguards there we go will they protect him on the track probably not i imagine but hopefully um if you're mac verstappen you're gonna qualify first and get first by the first corner and that may well be the closest anyone gets to you let's hope not in terms of racing Anyone getting close to you? No, obviously. We don't want anything to happen to you, Max. We want you around next year for an exciting championship. But let's hope people can get close to him on the track. This has been the Hot Lap. Thank you so much for all your likes, all your comments. It's been absolutely amazing. All your subscriptions. If you made it to the end, you're a champion. If you made it to the end and or subscribe, you are a, definitely a multiple world champion and a constructors world champion. Platonically, I love you. Thank you very much. And... um. I'll speak to you soon.